This is a simple little activity I do to put ions into the student's hands. In fact, that's what it's called, putting ions in their hands. We use paper and scissors and glue, and they just kind of like having a day of cutting and pasting. Um, but it, it gets them to manipulate the structures rather than just writing compound names and formulas. And it get, helps me to see if they understand what's going on a little bit better. It's just a different approach to uh, doing ionic compounds. What I do is I give them a sheet of paper that has these structures already drawn on them. And we have several different shapes here. We've got little circles with noses pointing out. And we've got squares with holes in them. And you see they kind of fit together quite nicely. Okay? Now, what does it mean? Well, I tell them that the triangles are electrons. So this circle has gained an electron, and the square has lost an electron. When one substance has gained an electron and one substance has lost an electron, they're attracted to each other, and they'll stick together. Now, some substances may gain two electrons or lose two electrons. And of course, we can have three electrons and, or lose three electrons. Now, their first job, actually, before they cut them out, is to label them. So we have to decide which ones are negative and which ones are positive. And possibly you've experienced this. Oh, if I gain something, that makes it positive. No, we got to correct them. And I let them correct themselves. If they're working in small groups on this, if somebody says that, somebody else will usually correct them, or I'm listening and walking around the room. But if something that has gained an electron is going to be negative, so I'll write one negative there. And we're going to label these two negative and three negative. And then over here, if they've lost electrons, they've become positive. So we've got one positive, two positive, and three positive. Then I give them a sheet of paper with several compounds on them. And some of them I'll give them just the name. And some of them I'll give them the formula. So we're going to start with something simple. We're going to start with sodium chloride. And since I've given them the name, they have to write the formula. And once they've written the formula, then they have to decide what goes into that formula. And sodium being a 1 plus ion and chloride being a 1 minus ion, these fit together quite nicely. And we have sodium chloride. Well, that's an easy one. So I get uh, the sheet of paper that I get them gets progressively more complicated. Um, we can talk about ammonium phos aluminum phosphate. And aluminum phosphate has an aluminum, which they should know is a 3 plus ion. And phosphate, well, phosphate, let's see. They can look it up in their book. By now, they've probably memorized the page that it's on. And they say it's a P and four O's. So they start going through here and looking for a phosphorus and four oxygens. And somebody will hopefully steer them. If not, I will. No, phosphate is one ion. I know it has several atoms in it, but it's one ion. And phosphate's a three minus ion. And they go together nicely. And that's aluminum phosphate. And even though we have several atoms there, we only have two ions. Um, the structures tend to work pretty well until we get to some where uh, we're trying to fit, for example, potassium sulfate. Potassium's a plus one, which I have right here. Okay, sulfate is a minus two. So sometimes the students will put those together, and I've actually had students tear off the extra triangle. All right, well, that's not going to work. So what we really need to do is put two of them together. It's, it's not rocket science. 
Uh, it's just a simple thing to do. It's a manipulative that gives students the chance to, to actually use a physical structure um, to represent the charges. And it's something to, for, to have them do rather than just simply writing the formulas and writing the names of the compounds. So that's what I do when we talk about ionic compounds.